Hey y'all, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So getting right into it, uh, we of course were doing another nail video. I went ahead and already prepped my practice hand and now I'm making sure the tips are flush to the natural nail on the sides with my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file. Of course, as always, um, it is going to be listed in the description from my Amazon list and everything else will be listed as well. So like I said, the first thing we're doing is taking that file and making sure that the tips are flush to the natural nail. So what I'm doing at this point is just squaring off the tips. I want to make sure that the tips are as straight as possible. And then we're going to move right into using our electric file. Right now I have the mandrel bit and a sanding band, a fine grit sanding band. And I am just making sure that the tips are flush to that natural nail bed. And I am using my e-file at about a speed of 4,000 RPMs. And I forgot to throw it up earlier, but I'll throw it up right now. This is the look that we're trying to recreate, which I found on Pinterest. So at this point, we're going to get right into the acrylic application. Um, pretty much all I'm using are medium and small beads. I don't really use large beads while I am a beginner. Um, so I'm just going to be placing that kind of up towards the cuticle, but somewhat in the middle of the nail as well. So I'm just going to let you guys watch that process. Make sure that you really focus on the cuticle area to avoid lifting. So yeah, just watch the process and let me know what you guys think. Now, I don't know if you guys could tell with the first nail, but really pay attention with this nail and see that I am constantly swiping the sides and kind of trying to perfect the shape the entire time. That way it's less filing for me at the end. Um, keeping the shape intact really helps with not having, like I said, to file and file and file. And you don't have as many bumps, of course. So make sure you're really paying attention to that and trying to keep the shape as clean as possible while doing your application.
as you can see i'm really trying to pay attention to that cuticle area i keep swiping um adding beads kind of trying to thin it out but still have the strength that we need so really like i said pay attention to that cuticle area I didn't mention it earlier, but I will mention it now in case you haven't noticed. Um, I did speed up the video a little bit. I know that my first one was a little bit slow because I am a beginner, so I figured I would speed it up and cut out the parts of me kind of taking a while to gather my thoughts and get everything together. So there are a few parts that I cut out and I did speed it up just to kind of make it not so boring for you guys. <laughs> So we are going to go back in with that electric file. I'm also using a 5-in-1 bit, also from Amazon. So because we're not on the natural nail, we are going to raise the RPMs to 9 to 10,000. So 9 to 10,000 RPMs, I really want to focus on that cuticle area to make sure that the acrylic is really flush to that natural nail. And with the 9 to 10,000 RPMs, we're not going to use a lot of pressure just because we are not trying to debulk the nail. We just want to smooth it out. We're not trying to thin it out. 
Um, so make sure because it is an electric file with some pretty high RPMs, you're constantly moving around the nail. You don't want to stay in one spot and cause heat spikes because they are terrible and really uncomfortable. So I will let you guys watch that because it does get a little bit repetitive. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to take my Tammy Taylor peel and stick file again and I'm just going to go ahead and perfect that shape because like I said um, I really did try and focus on keeping the shape intact. There is not a lot of filing to be done but you do want to make sure that you fix any imperfections that may have happened when you were applying acrylic because it does um, add a little bit of bulkiness to the sides and whatnot. So I will let you guys watch that. At this point, I'm going to take the same file and I'm going to go ahead and go over the surface of all of the nails. I know I use the electric file to smooth it out, but sometimes that can leave little bumps um, or bumps that you just don't notice. So I use the file to make sure that everything is smooth. I have a little bit more control with it, so it's just really helpful. Make sure you guys do that. At this point, we're just going to brush off those nails and go ahead and start with the sponge buffer. This helps with after the hand file because sometimes the hand file will leave streaks um, and things like that. And the sponge buffer just makes it completely smooth. There is no ridges. There, there are no streaks. Excuse me. There are no small bumps, nothing. So make sure you guys use a sponge buffer.
Now we're going to clean those nails off with a lint-free wipe and some alcohol. And I just like to get all the dust off of them, plus the dust off of the practice hand itself on the little fingertips. Uh, so make sure you do that, get all the dust and debris off before you go in with your polish. Now, as I said previously, this is the look that we're trying to recreate. So the first thing I'm going to do are the two end nails. Um, so we're going in with the black nails first, and then we will go in with the two pink nails in the middle. So after we were done painting them for the first time, I put them in the light for a full minute to cure them. And now we're going in with a second coat. Um, you are going to see that I did do a third coat on the pink nails just because the pink was so light. And the fake nail that I used for the practice hand was just really dark. Um, and so I needed to make sure that it was covered. I typically wouldn't use a third coat. I don't like to layer too many things on, but I felt like it was necessary. of course this is the third coat that i was talking about that i wouldn't typically do um but in between the second and third coat i did make sure that i cured them in the light for a full minute and then i am like i said going in with that third coat of pink after that third coat i did go ahead and cure them in the light again for a full minute and now we're going in with our nail art um so the first thing i'm doing is i'm getting my black and i'm gonna start creating spider webs i wanted to create a dot on each corner on both uh diagonal corners excuse me to make sure that i had a base for the spider web i feel like if i didn't have any base to the spider web it really wouldn't have worked for me um so i did want to create a small dot just as a base So here you'll see at this moment, I was going to start with another like swipe of a web of the like middle part of the web, but then I figured I needed another line. It was just too open in my opinion. Um, so I did put another one and then we'll continue.
Now, I've noticed a lot of people when they're doing spider webs, they look really beautiful, but they look too perfect in my opinion. <laughs> um, so I did kind of mess this one up a bit, but I liked how it looked anyways because I feel like spider webs aren't really supposed to look perfect all the time. Um, so no discredit from any other, you know, artist or anything like that because like I said, they look beautiful, but I felt like mine, the little messed up look obviously because one, I'm a beginner and two, just because that's how it was, I felt like it kind of worked. So I am gonna leave it as messy as it looks. And at this point, I am gonna go ahead and start on that lower spider web, the second spider web. Um, so I did make the side a bit thick, but it was okay. It didn't really matter. Like I said, the messy look, kind of worked for me anyways so i'll just let you guys watch as i do the second spider web and the other spider webs So now we are starting on the second finger. Once again, I did want to put little dots as a base for my web, and I'm going to go ahead and start working on the first web of this finger, and I'll let you guys watch that. It is pretty much the same as the other one.
So at this point, I'm going in with a dotting tool instead of a brush because I wanted perfect circles for the head and body of our spider. So I'm using a dotting tool to make one small uh, little circle and one slightly a little bit bigger. What I did was I used the same dotting tool, but just put a little bit lighter pressure for the head. And now I'm just taking that same nail art brush and creating the legs to the spider. And after the legs, we are going to create a little web from his little booty. <laughs> So once I was satisfied with how my nail art was looking, I went ahead and cured it in the light for a full minute. And now I'm going in with some top coat. I'm using matte top coat from Dynamic Nail Supply today just because I never really do anything matte. And I thought this set would look really cute with it, which it did. So that's why I'm using that today. And once you get to the two middle fingers with the nail art, you want to make sure that you're not really scrubbing it in, but kind of really getting it in between all of the crevices, um, especially in between the web and in between the legs of the spider. You want to make sure you don't have any areas that are missing top coat because that will make you really prone to chipping and scratches and things of that sort. So after everything is coated, we're going to go ahead and put that in the light. And I like to cure it for a full two minutes. And that's the finished look. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. And I'll see you guys on the next one.